Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Bayport United Methodist Church. It's my joy and privilege to be here with you this rainy Sunday morning. It's perfect day for worship God, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. Um, just, I'm grateful and I'm thankful to be here with you this morning to praise and give thanks to our God and what he has done for us. I pray that you could find the word of grace and feel God's presence during our worship today. Um, because of some kind of minor technical problem, today we do not have any like screen and projector. So please make sure that you have the song here, the bulletin here, so that please follow the liturgy. And I have a few announcements. We gather every Sunday for worship service. Yay! Aren't you guys excited? <laughs> yes, every Sunday. Of course, we worship remotely at the same time. Thank God for this technology. And we will go back to the sanctuary when the video and audio system get prepared for online worship service. So please keep the worship committee and the technical persons in your prayer for wisdom and guidance. And Donna have a few things to share, right? Yes, I know you're, I know you're all shocked at that. <laughs> good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you all here. Um, I just have a couple of quick announcements this morning. Um, firstly, the UMW bake sale is this Friday, July 30th at the Sable Ferry Dock. All proceeds from the sale will go to fund our wonderful VBS program so that we can continue to offer it for free to the community. If you haven't already done so, please sign up uh, to help sell items. Um, we have slots available from 1.30 till 4 and from 6 until 8. These are, set up, these are both set up and breakdown slots. Just a note, we can have a maximum of three people working at our table per the protocols established by the ferry company. Um, we're also in need of baked goods. We have very few people signed up to be baking, so please, please, please. Um, if you haven't already signed up, there are sheets on the registration table and we need stuff. So thank you. Also, I am looking for a few lay, lay readers. Um, we've lost a couple over the last year or so. Um, this is a wonderful way to serve your church. It only takes a couple of hours every six weeks or so. So if you're interested in becoming a lay reader or perhaps moving from a substitute spot to a scheduled spot, please speak with me after service or send me a quick email. Um, I'm in alto one at gmail.com. And I will be putting the schedule together for the upcoming season over the next couple of weeks. So if you could let me know as soon as possible, I would appreciate it. Thanks. Is there any other announcements? Not, let's begin our worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Come, rest your spirits in the Lord. We come, hungering and thirsting for God's word. This is a place of peace and hope where all my people will be fed and healed. Bring us to the time of healing. 
Come, place your trust in God, who is always near you. Open our hearts, Lord, to hear your word and feel your presence. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord, Lord we, we come, come into, into your presence this morning with, with the busy, busy schedules of summer activities crowding our lives. Our, lives. our souls need to be fed. And, and yet we seem powerless, powerless to find nurture and feeding, feeding that, will that will sustain us. Open our, our ears, hearts, our eyes, and our hearts this day, this day to hear your words of hope and healing, healing for, for us. We, we ask, ask this in Jesus' Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is All Who Hunger, and it's found in the insert uh, in your bulletins. Would you rise? reading this morning is the 14th Psalm. Fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all gone astray. They are all alike perverse. There is no one who does good, no, not one of them. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? There shall be in great terror, for God is with the company of the righteous. Who would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge? Oh, that deliverance for Israel would come from Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, 
Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The children of God, it's time to pass the peace one another. Look at each other with sweet, lovely eyes, and then peace be with you. Say peace to you. Peace be with you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. For online worshipers, also peace to you. <laughs> stand as you are able for a reading from the gospel according to John, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 21. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to the test him. And for he himself, Philip answered him, 
Six months' wages would not be enough to buy, buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciple, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, he began to say, they began to say, this indeed is the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the Sea of Capernaum. Now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. And they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. What is church? What is the purpose of the church? I believe church is the community of faith the church is a people not a building and the church is a place where people are fed jesus said come unto me all you have labor and are heavy burdened that place where we come to jesus for unburdening is named church. Probably you have heard the filling station analogy for the church. The church is like a filling station. I come there empty, and that's where I get filled for the next week. The point of the church, the reason why we are here, is to heal our hearts and to fill our hungers. Today's gospel depicts a compassionate Jesus miraculously feeding hungry people. Jesus calls the disciples, travels, teaches, prays, heals, and now even feeds the hungry. He was a busy man. But the problem is, he also asks us, to do what he did, make disciples of everyone in the whole world, not just folks in our neighborhood. Feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, forgive our enemies, and on, on and on and on and on. Many things to do as a Christian. Sometimes being a Christian feel like being taken to the shore of the ocean given a teaspoon and told, start dipping. Call me when you have drained the sea. So many things to be, need to be done and responsibilities. Although many Christians and the community of faith have been doing a lot of missional works and ministries, the world is still hurting. Sometimes I am afraid of turning my TV on, TV news. As I 
as I don't want to see all those tragedies in the world. I feel so painful. But still, there are many faithful Christian people believing the power of love. And they work so hard to reach out those who in need. Does they never, never give up to spread the word of God and the power of God's love. And I'm sure that Bayport is one of those. I truly felt that. Bayport is a community church and missional church. Yesterday, I presided a memorial service for Eileen Zeno, and this is the flowers from their family. I was so moved by all the young people, the, the younger generation who love their grandmother and great grandmother. They just stand here, stood here and share their memories and honor. That was just awesome. I was so moved. That service reminded me of my grandmother who passed last year, who was 104 years old. 104, yes. Passed on her own bed while she was sleeping. She always helped others in need. A month before she passed, she had asked my father to find any organization that feeds the children and the hungry. She wanted to donate her possession to feed the children. So I heard that, I had heard that. So I had asked her while we were on FaceTime, you know, the new technology, face to face. Hey, grandma, grandma, your grandson is hurting. Your grandson is hungry. Here, look, Madison, Alexis, and Noah, we are hungry. We need your help. <laughs> and she laughed and told, no, no, no. You'll be fine. I know. God will take care of you. You are the God's servants. You're not hungry. I know you. And then I laughed. <laughs> but mostly, no offense. This type of person usually very independent sharp and stubborn yes she was so stubborn <laughs> although i tried to convince her to help her grandson me she donated donated her every possession to a non-profit organization food for the hungry five days before her death she was such a compassionate woman who liked to help others rather than being helped she was such a faithful woman of God. And still, she is my role model and my father's role model. We both are involved in ministries. Anyway, in today's gospel reading, as I mentioned before, Jesus is busy teaching, healing, ministering to the hurting many people, and it grows late. The disciples suggest that now is the time to tell the crowd, go home, and leave Jesus alone. You are too tired, Jesus. We are looking the story in the book of John today, but there are the same story in the book of Matthew. Actually, the story of feeding 5,000 people is only story described in all Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Same stories in the four Gospels each. In the gospel, gospel of Matthew especially, one of the disciples says, send the crowds away so they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. That's what disciples told. If they are hungry, that is their problem. They're going to go and grab whatever they want. They have to buy. But Jesus said to them today, where will we buy food to feed these people? You give them something to eat. Who? Us? The disciples protest. More than a half year's salary worth of food wouldn't be enough for each person to have even a little bit. Look at 
those people, there are about 5,000. What do you have? Jesus said. We have nothing but a, a kid here has just five loaves of bread and two fish. But what good is that for a crowd like this? And Jesus took what they had, said the blessing, and gave it back to them, and wonder of wonders, it was enough. All ate and were filled. No, it was even better than that. All ate and there were big baskets of leftovers. This action, taking what they have, blessing they, we have, they have, give out what they have, and there being an overflow. This is the miracle, the work of God. That is at the heart of the Christian faith. Maybe that is, that is why the church at all times and places has repeated the action in Holy Communion. I love Holy Communion. In that sacrament, we offer what we have to Jesus. He takes it gladly, blesses it, breaks it, and gives it. Then thus a hungry world is satisfied. That's the communion. For me, a key point in this story comes when Jesus seemed to ask, well, what do you have? In this world, there are just too many hurting people. And we who care are so few. And our resources are so limited. We feel we are so small. It's then that Jesus asks, well, what do you have? Then he takes what we have, which is only what he has given, blesses it, and transforms it into more than enough. Some of you might say, Pastor, hey, Pastor Sajin, I can't believe this kind of supernatural miracle in Jesus. I don't believe it. That's the story. That's okay. Totally fine, because the core message of the story of the miraculous work, miraculous feeding of the hungry is not the miracle itself. That's not the main point, nor is it simply a call to more earnest human striving on behalf of the needs of the others. Today's story is all about Jesus, who chooses to say to ordinary disciples like us and to do through us. I look at what I had to offer, nothing there but a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. Yet, Jesus had taken my small resources and blessed them, and they were, with his blessing, more than enough. That's the theology of today's gospel. My sisters and brothers, sisters and brothers and friends, let us not be intimidated by what we have, our limitation. We are so small, we don't have much. But do not focus on what we don't have, rather. Let us give thanks to our God for what we have. We have beautiful church building, we have people work, we have friends, we have families. There's many things we have. And let us grateful to our Lord God for what we have and what he has done for us. Be thankful. And let us have faith that Jesus knew what he was doing when he called people like us to be his people in this part of town. Let us not be overwhelmed by the vast need of the world have compassion. I know you have compassion. Offer what you have to him, your time, your energy, your gift. He will take what you have, what I have. Bless what you offer, what we offer, and it will be more than enough.
miraculously abundant. Amen? Amen. Yeah, amen. Thanks be to God. Now it's time to offer our prayer to God as a community of faith. So if there are any prayer requests down there, please bring it up to me. So let us pray. We pray for those on our prayer list in the bulletin. Lord, there are over 100 people's name on our pr prayer list. Oh God, to those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength to those who have sinned mercy to all who sorrow your peace loving god in your mercy hear our prayer we pray that the lord would save us all from this coronavirus and heal those who are battling with the virus and we praise the lord for all those who have already recovered and come home to us loving god in your mercy, hear our prayer. Donna play, uh, prays for blessings for her mother Arlene on her 93rd birthday and gives thanks for her escaping serious injury following a fall. And she also prays for good weather and a good turnout for the, for the bake sale. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I would offer prayers for Conrad and Dory as Dory fights leukemia and for those impacted by the wildfire, those who lost their homes, those who have been evacuated, and for the firefighters themselves. And finally, for Felicia, my mother's aide, as she prepares to fly to Ghana to visit her mother who is recuperating from heart surgery. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayer for Adam Sauce, um, that he may gain strength battling addiction. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The prayer for Catherine Sauce, blessings on her 12th birthday. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, Rupe and Wendy play, pray for Jameson and prayers for healing after jaw surgery. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for Tommy Haynes, Jim Frankson for, uh, for healing, and thanksgiving for all of our blessings. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers also for uh, Debbie's ability to discern and make decisions for her medical treatment. Loving God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For we ask this name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
hurting. But we have faith. And then we bring our gifts and what we have to you. You bless these gifts. And you use these gifts for your glory. Just we rely on you and your grace and your mercy and your, for your miraculous work. Just you remember the hands that gave this gift to you and bless their own hands and their family. And you hear the unspoken prayer from their heart. Lord, bless each one of us and bless Bayport Church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everyone. Uh, morning. Morning. Uh, today I'm offering the music called uh, His Eyes on the Spiral. Okay, just like in the lyrics, His Eyes on the Spiral, and I know He watches over me. <laughs> Amen. 
Please rise and then join me singing. Let's join us. been given every good gift for proclaiming God's presence and God's love. The world is thirsting for this good news. People struggle for words of hope and peace. So, my friends, as you have been blessed now, go and share the good news and be a blessing in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.